So as always, we start with the fundamentals of telephone prospecting or just communication. Number one, you can make up in skill while you're lacking numbers. I'm sure again, I am a broken record and I drink my own Kool-Aid. You make up in skill where you lack in numbers and nobody has ever gotten good at anything without practice. I was just talking to my daughter this morning as I was taking her to school and she was talking about how I did in school and how my brothers did in school and I did much better than my brothers in school. And it's because I'm very competitive. And I remember very distinctively when I was learning math and you guys might relate to a similar story that you'd get a math assignment and they'd have you do all the odd numbers or all the even numbers. My thing was I did all of them and I did them, I did the assignment over and over again until I understood it. I had no idea the whole process back then. I was a young man, but I can look back on things that have happened in life and anything that I wanted to get good at. And I, I, I'm just like, a, I'm a special kind of someone and I just practice, practice, practice. And a lot of times it wasn't because I just wanted to get better. I just wanted to be better than everyone else. So, I mean, my that personality trait just keeps on rolling with me and it's worked out so far the person who asks the questions controls the conversation this is true in every single conversation that you're in this is true if you're having a conversation with family members with friends and if you notice a natural conversation goes back and forth right you don't just have a conversation by yourself with another person there you don't just Bleh. well there are people that do that has there ever been a time where you've actually talked to someone and you're like, God, would you shut up? Would you just allow me to say something? Would you stop talking about yourself? Right? That's what a lot of salespeople do. You want to get out of that habit. Uh, and a lot of people do that because they're nervous. So don't be nervous. Practice. Practice makes it so you're not nervous. Um, so the person who asks the question controls the conversation. Three, you cannot change a person's perception or belief. Only they can. And the only way that you can do that is by asking them, questions that guides them to a point in the conversation that they have to make a decision. They're either going to have an aha moment and go this way, or they're going to not, you know, not have anything and go that way. It doesn't matter what the result is, that what matters is getting them to the result, getting them to the decision making. So you cannot change a person's perception only they can. This is something that I've, I've talked about in the office is that you don't have a lead until you know a why and a when. If you don't know somebody's why and a when, they're a prospect right? If you're calling around a just listed, a just sold, if you're geo prospecting, yeah, you know, somebody owns a home, you know, that they live in a certain area. You don't know if they want to sell it. And if you do, they do want to sell it. You don't know why, right? Because the why is a big deal. The why is going to determine whether or not you have someone that's going to look at houses for an indefinite period of time, or somebody who's just going to list their home just for the sake of listing their home, right? Um, you're going to get, and if you're working with buyers, you're going to get those people who want to window shop. And I'll tell you what, nobody likes if, you know, professionals get paid, amateurs don't. If you're an amateur and you like taking people out window shopping and you really like looking at homes, you know, go for it. I'm not. I like, uh, I'm a professional. I get paid. And if I'm going to go show properties, it has one fundamental to it. It's so they can buy a house. If I'm going to list a property. It has one fundamental to it. One goal is to sell their house, right? Everything else is just noise. Uh, number five, when in doubt, mirror their objections as a question, right? Now, this works great if, if you don't know what to say or if they take you sideways. If you're practicing objection handling, 99% of the time, the, the objection that's going to come out of somebody's mouth is going to be 90% similar to anything else, right? So very rarely will you get something that just comes out of left field. Uh, but when you do, just mirror their, their objection or their question as a question back to them. And most of the time, they'll give you a little bit more information, gives you a little bit more time. Sometimes you're able to level shift out of that. And then the final one, you never get better at anything without practice. Ever. Anything. In the history of humanity, nobody got good at something without practice. Yeah, you have people with natural ability. Yeah, I'll take somebody who has a, a strong work ethic because work uh, you know, work works, hard work works, um, but you'll never get better at anything without practice. So if you don't have, if you're not good at your listing presentation, it's your fault. If you're not good at objections, it's your fault. What you're doing is you make time for things that are important 
And what you're doing, if you're not good, if you're not proficient, if you're not up to that level that you wish you were, what you're finding is that you're going to make time for other things that are more important. A lot of time it's going to be sleep, right? When you're new, you've got to be burning the candle at both ends. You've got to be increasing your skill set. You've got to be laying that foundation for your business, but you've also got to be doing the activities to get you your business. You don't have the luxury of working nine to five. I had an agent call me yesterday that wanted to transfer into our, into our office. And uh, as I was asking them questions, they have a full-time job as a financial analyst and just wants to do real estate as a side gig. I don't do side gigs, right? We're not, a, we're not a side gig office. And if you guys look at our production, if you look at our place in the market, you will see we are not a side gig hustle. So those are the fundamentals. And now we're going to jump into objection handling. So we, we covered Tuesday. I have a friend in the business. So we covered that on Tuesday. And then we also covered, we'll pay you a buyer, a commission if you have a buyer. So if you didn't get a chance to get on Tuesdays, go back on to, to Tuesday on, uh, on Facebook and look back into the Real Skills 360 group and go back through that. What do you do to get home sold? What do you do to get home sold? That's a really great question. That's exactly how I'd respond to that. What do I do to get home sold? Or what do I do to get home sold? Well, yeah, what, what do you do to get home sold? You know, that's a really great question. Now, here's the thing with this question. You should not be getting to the kitchen table and getting this objection, right? Because the process that you have going into this objection uh, should already answer it. A good presentation, a good listing presentation, a good buyer presentation, a good pre-qualification package, a pre-meeting packet, the whole process through this, a good presentation should answer all the general questions and answer all the most common objections, right? So what do you do to get home sold? We're gonna frame this like you're prospecting. Let's say that you're calling around just listed, just sold. So yeah, Brett, I am interested in, in selling my home. Thank you for calling. Uh, you actually called me at the right time, but if, what is it that you do to get home sold? You know, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, that's a really great question. In fact, I would love the opportunity to share with you exactly what I'd do to get home sold. Would you be open to meeting with me maybe for 20 or 30 minutes sometime this week? Now, remember guys, I don't go hard. I don't, I don't do a hardcore, or a hardcore close. A lot of people would train you guys. Typically, I find that a lot of people who train on scripts and dialogues and objection handling don't do it. Um, what do you do to get home sold? Oh, that's a great question. When can we meet and talk about it? Wednesday at one o'clock or Thursday at noon? Silence, right? You haven't, you haven't established a rapport, right? You haven't asked. The whole process is a communication. You don't do that to your friends, right? You don't do that to your family members, right? If your friend came up and asked you uh, a question, you're not just going to go into the hard close, right? You're going you're gonna to walk them through the process. Hey, you know, uh, what do I do to get home sold? That's a really great question. Um, you know, I've been, I've been specializing in this market for, for over 20 years. I've sold over X amount of homes. Uh, what I'd like to do, if you're open to it, if you're serious about selling your home, I'd love to come by, take a look at your home, and then sit down with you for maybe 20 or 30 minutes and share with you my exact 22 Brett's awesome success system in selling homes that I can get your home sold for the most amount of money and the quickest amount of time. Would you be open to meeting with me sometime this week? Well, I don't know about this week. I mean, this week's pretty tough. I have a, I'm, I'm pretty busy. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm pretty tight this week as well. Um, but, you know, I have some time. Now, now I'm going to go down the funnel, right? Now I, now I went for a broad option. I got a little bit of pushback. Um, now I'm going to go down another level. Okay, you know, I'm, you know I'm, I'm actually pretty tight, you know, in my schedule myself. Do you typically find that you have more time in the mornings or the afternoon? Why well, I'm, I'm typically more free in the afternoon. Okay, you know, me too. So I could be out there you know, either Thursday or Friday, you know, somewhere around the two o'clock mark. Do, does, does either of those days work for you? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm pretty busy this day. Okay, I totally get it. Do you know what your next week looks like? No, I don't know what next week's. Tell you what, can you give me a call next week and we can actually set up a time? Now, look, guys, they just gave you permission to communicate with them. Don't screw it up right here, right? Don't try to push them. Don't try to push a square hole or a square peg through a round hole, right? You know, I'm really busy right now, and chances are, look, guys, you're a cold call. You're, you don't have rapport with them. 
People make time for things that are important. And what this is saying is that what they're doing right now might be watching TV, eating potatoes on a commercial break. Their show just came back on. But whatever they're doing is more important than talking to you. But you just got permission to actually uh, talk to them back. Absolutely. I can call you back. In fact, could I just set up a brief time to call you back on Monday uh, during my follow-up time from 11 to 11.30? Could I do that? Would that be okay with you? Yeah, yeah. 11 to 11.30. If you give me a call back, I'm going to know what my schedule's like. Perfect. In the meantime, I'd like to just send you some information by email. Can I do that? Guys, notice how my frame of questioning is just asking permission, right? So I don't know about you guys, but I have these digital marketers um, that know nothing about the sales process. They're, they're, they're data searching on me. They're finding my email. They're finding my phone number. Nobody calls me. What they do is they blast me on email and I don't talk to them. They blast me on LinkedIn. They blast me on, on Facebook. I don't talk to them. None of them are calling me. And I just got a text message this morning from another one saying that they, got, they, they reached out to me a few times via email. You know, to me, that's not sales, right? That's not now business. To me, that's doing what the easiest route, right? That's like being part of the sheep. That's, being, being, that's like being a sheep, part of the, the sheep herd, right? Just doing what everybody else is doing and, and hoping that you can actually get it. It will work, right? If you do something often enough, it will work. But if somebody is actually looking for selling their home and they, it's their, for most part, it's their largest financial investment in their life. And they do that a few different times. You know, typically, I don't know, maybe I'm just a special kind of someone, which I admit that I am. Maybe then, I don't know, maybe, maybe that works for them. It doesn't work for me. I want to get on the phone. I want to talk to someone. Now, if they respond back to me on a different channel, I'll respond back to them and then ask them permission to get on onto a different channel. You know, if they send me something in Facebook, hey, you know, that's a really great question. I'd love to really, you know, get on the phone and, and talk to you. I had an agent that uh, wants me to meet with another agent who might be coming to the office and says, what time can they set up a time for me tomorrow? Whoa, I don't know what this is about, right? So I responded, hey, what is it that you'd like me to talk to them about? Do they want to talk to me about a, you know, a needs analysis and go through our value proposition to see if we're a right fit? Um, or if they're going to join your team, do they just need to come in and sign documents? Kind of a big deal, right? I practice what I preach. I don't meet with anybody without knowing what I'm meeting for because most of the time, um, it's, you know, that's, that's me not being in control of my day, right? And for those of you who know me, and you guys have seen my calendar, you know, I time block. So I got a lot of things going on. Anyways, so what do you do to get home sold? Pretty easy one, pretty common. You're going to get that. Um, make sure that make sure that your whole process, that you have a pre-meeting packet that outlines your 14, 15, 20 point plan that explains why you're so awesome, right? That resolves the objection that you're gonna get at the kitchen table, right? Make sure that you have a CMA in there, right? That resolves the objection on price, right? Uh, make sure that you have your resume in there, right? Whatever you have on LinkedIn, make sure it's on your resume right? So they know your experience, right? You're resolving a lot of these objections. Hey, Brett, you know, I looked at your 22 point marketing plan. What do you do to get home sold? And you, you just look at them. That's an interesting question. So did you get a chance to look at the 22 point marketing plan? Oh yeah, I did. It's exactly what I do to get home sold. Do you have any questions about it? No, I don't, I don't have any questions. So Mr. and Mrs. Seller, do you feel that based on all this information that you have, have saw about me, that I am qualified and I have the experience that you're looking for uh, to get your home sold? Well, yes, we do. Okay, so is there anything that's stopping you right now to, to hiring me to, to sell your home? Well, I wanna to talk to you about the commission. Different objection, right? Now you solved it. Now you've narrowed it down to a money thing. Now, I didn't wanna go down this route, but Okay, so what is it about the objection, the, the, the commission I charge that is important to you, that you have questions about? Well, you know, you know someone else, you know, Joe Schmuckatelli um, uh, will do it at 4%. 4%, wow. Okay, um, I don't know Joe Schmuckatelli. Um, does he do business in this area? Does he do a lot of business? You know, I don't know. Oh, you don't know if he does a lot of business. No, no, he just, you know, he just called me like you. Okay, did he send you over his action plan? Yeah, he did. Okay, and, and what does it do? What's he doing? Does it, does it, is it, 
Does he do as much as I do? No, no, he doesn't. Okay, does he have his, the experience in selling as many homes as I do? No, no, you, you are most definitely the home, most experienced. Okay, Mr. and Ms. Seller, you know, most homeowners are looking to sell their home for the most money possible in the quickest amount of time. Is that you as well? Yeah, that is me as well. Okay, so do you think that somebody who doesn't sell a lot of homes, that doesn't specialize in your area, is going to accomplish those two goals for you? Well, since you put it that way, no, I, I, I don't think so. Okay, yeah, I agree with you. Now look, when it comes down to the fee that I charge, I believe that the fee that I charge based on the time, effort, and experience that I, I have in this industry is fair for the services that I provide. Is there anything about my, the, the rate that I charge that you feel is unfair? Ooh, now you just put it back on them. No, 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 you're, you're definitely qualified that. Okay, so is there any reason, is there any other reason why you wouldn't hire me to, to, to sell your home right, right now? Well, you know, we, we, we really got to think about it. No, I totally get it. Um, it's a big decision. If you don't mind me asking, you know, typically when a homeowner says they have to think about it, there are some unanswered questions. So what questions do you have that you have to think about? Well, you know, so it's just, it's just going down the pipeline, guys. It's just, you know, everything that I've done is through your script practice. All the questions that I, that I ask are based through the scripts. Now I'm using them in different orders and I'm using a lot of different techniques, but the questions are all the same. The only difference in any script is the opening. That's it. It's the opening. And if you kind of go with my methodology, the opening is pretty much the same. You do an assumptive opening, right? And then when you do the assumptive opening, you, you say the reason I'm calling. Now, the reason you're calling is going to be much different. It could be expired, could be a for sale by owner, could be around just listed, just sold, could be whatever. But the two things that people always want to know is why is who is calling me and why are they calling me? So that's your opening. You need to answer those two questions before you can go on. Right. So for those of you that um, have, have uh, you know, role played with me, it's always the same. Hi, John. Yeah. Hey, John, this is Brett over here at Keller Williams Irvine. How are you? I'm doing good, Brett. What can I help you with? Well, John, the reason I'm calling is your home just came up as an expired listing. I wanted to see if you're by chance looking for another agent to sell your home. No. Okay. Notice how my line of questioning, I want to get to the first no. I don't want to beat around the bush. You can't go, everybody's going to give you guys a no at first. It's a reflex. You do it, I do it, everybody does it. Accept it, practice it, know how to get around it. Oh, no. Uh, did, are, did you already sell the home? No, no, it's, it's off the market. Okay, are you still looking to sell the home? Yeah, but we've decided to take the home uh, off the market for time being. Oh, you decided to take the home off the market for time being. So if you don't mind me asking, if a buyer, if someone had a buyer right now, you wouldn't entertain any type of offers? Oh, no, 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 no. We would entertain offers. We're just not actively marketing the property. Okay, so you're a pocket listing. You're not, you're not, you're not actively trying to sell it, but you, if, if someone were actually came up and said, hey, we want to buy it, you would sell it? Yeah, okay. If you don't mind me asking, how long have you lived in this home? We've lived here for 15 years. 15 years, wow, good for you. And if you don't mind me asking again, how many times has someone came and knocked on your door without the home being for sale and asked you to sell their home? I've only heard of one, ish in, one time that ever worked and it was Oprah, uh, she went and knocked on somebody's door and asked if she could buy the house. And it was Oprah, right? She has more money than God probably. So, um, so that's it, what time do we got? 8.50, let's see what the next one is. We're gonna wait until after the holidays. Okay, well this isn't, this, this comes up pretty often. We talked about this last week. We're going to wait until dot, 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 after the holidays, you know, fill in the blank after COVID, um, you know, after the elections. Those are probably the most three common ones that I'm getting up. After COVID, after the elections, after the holidays. And, you know, there's one thing that this is one that, this is probably the most common objection that I'm working with people on to uh, resolve. And it comes down to why is it important to wait after such and such? If you don't mind me asking, what is it, why is it so important to wait until after the holidays? What is it about the holidays that you feel is important to you? Well, you know, it's, it's just some very uncertain times. Um, and we just think that now is the wrong time to do things. Oh, it's uncertain times. Absolutely. So if you don't mind me asking, you know, most homeowners want to sell their home 
uh, for in the quickest amount of time for the most money. Is that is that true for you as well? Yes, it is. Okay, and there are uncertain times. Do you believe that that the next three months, three months from now, is going to be on more more uncertain than the next thirty days? Well, what do you mean? Well, we have a good idea of what's going to happen in the next thirty days. Do you think that three months, four months? down the road is going to be more uncertain or less uncertain? Well, it's more uncertain. Yeah, it's more uncertain. So right now, we know that if we sold your home and you put it on the market right now, that we could sell the home for the highest price in the quickest amount of time in the history of forever. Forever! Like your home has never been worth more money as it is right this instant. But yet, I understand the strategy but if we're if, if if going into next year, waiting after the elections, waiting after the holidays, waiting until after COVID, whenever that might be, um, don't you think that that's more uncertainty? And do you want to take a gamble on the equity of your home? Well, what do you mean I want to take a gamble on my home? Well, right now we know that there's a 100% probability that if you sold your home now, you're going to get the most money ever. But, I mean, you just said that you agreed with me, right? That next year's uncertain. Yeah, next year's uncertain. So there's a 50-50 chance that you're gambling with your equity that either A, things are going to be a lot the same, which probably not, or B, things are just going to start disconnecting, right? And when things start disconnecting and things start getting downward pressure on prices, you know, would you rather sell your house now or take the chance of actually having to chase the market down and costing you tens of, ten, tens of thousands of dollars in equity? Which one works better for you? You really think the market's going to crash? You know, I don't know what's going to happen. That's the whole point about uncertainty. I don't know what's going to happen, but I do believe that there's at least a 50-50 chance that it could. And I wouldn't want to take that gift. But for me, I wouldn't want to take that gamble. But if you don't mind me asking, why is it that you're selling your home again? Do you have to sell it? No, I don't have to sell it. Okay, can you rent it? No, I don't want to rent it. Okay, well, if you don't have to sell it and you don't want to rent it, are you just going to stay there forever? No, no, I got to move. Okay, so if you have to move, and you can't rent it out, or you don't want to rent it out, and you don't want to stay where you're at, and you don't want to take the risk of tricking it down, why would you not want to try and sell it right now? Well, it's inconvenient. I totally get that it's inconvenient. Fourth quarter sales are always inconvenient, but what's more, are, is being a little bit of it, uh, an inconvenience worse the gamble of taking a hit of tens of thousands of dollars? Right? Guys, here's the other thing that I'm talking about. And I'm going to kind of close it up with this. In our market, we have almost a 32% reduction in Orange County, California, 32% reduction in homes on the market, active inventory. Okay. Now, right now we have a buyer frenzy. You know, it's ridiculous. Things are selling really, really fast. What would, now, a lot of people have taken their homes off the market to wait and see. They have the wait and see strategy, right? Just what we're talking here. What would happen if, those 32% uh, that, that, are not, that, are, that are off year over year, what if 25% of those came back onto the market in, in, the, in a short period of time? Say after the holidays, say after the election. Who knows when after COVID's gonna be? Like, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. But what would happen? Well, we now have a lot more supply. The demand is where the demand is at, right? Do you think that's going to put downward pressure on prices? Yes. Right? Do you think that the seller could potentially start, you know, chasing the market down? Absolutely. Are they going to be happy about it? Nope. Right? We talked about this. It's their choice. They get to decide whether or not they want to take the gamble or not. But as a fiduciary, it's your responsibility to at least let them know their options. Right? You don't have to share your point of view. You, sh you share other people. There's plenty of people on TV right, sharing their point of view, pick one and say, hey, so-and-so believes this, the other person believes this, one of them's going to be wrong. Do you want to take that gamble, right? Do you want to throw your equity on the line and roll those dice? Because that's really what it is. You might, and you might, you might break even, but you might lose big. What do you want to do? Vegas is, Vegas is not open, but Vegas is open on your, on your equity. All right, awesome sauce, guys. So for those of you guys that are on objection handling, um, I think we just covered one of these that's today. Um, and I will see you guys next Tuesday. Have a great day, guys. Make it awesome.